Another week of football goes by and with that another brilliant result for Luton Town as they claim their first three points in the Premier League on home soil. But to be honest with you, as the season goes by, it looks more and more likely that the Hatters are going to be here to stay or at the very least, put up a very good fight to do so. So, after being labelled the next whipping boys of the Premier League, how are Luton doing so well? Now, first and foremost, we have to credit their summer transfer business. I said it at the time, and I'll reiterate it, the Hatters had one of the best windows in the whole of the Premier League. According to Transfer Mart, Luton spent 19.7 million on 13 players, with them players holding an overall net value of 57 million pounds. They gathered a squad full of the perfect dimensions for survival. You have experience in the likes of Tim Cruel, Ross Barkley, and the return of Marvellous Nakamba, whilst also having the highly valued young players in the likes of 23-year-old Ryan Giles, 21-year-old Ted Mengi, and 22-year-old Isak Abore. And despite spending the least out of the promoted sides, their signings have arguably been the very best, with two of them being very key players that I really want to take a close look at. One of them players being Ogbeni, and for me, he is absolutely unbelievable. And the fact that they got him for just a compensation free agent is daylight robbery on behalf of Rotherham. Whether it be how easy he is on the eye with his element of flair and ability to just pop up in all sorts of areas, getting you on your feet, or look at him statistically and the number he produces. Ogbeni is a sensational footballer. We know Luton are one of them teams with a five at the back, low block, defend for your lives kind of style of play. And with that comes obviously not having a lot of the ball. I mean, they sit very bottom of the Premier League for average possession per game. So players that are good at progressing play specifically in carrying the ball are an absolute necessity to Rob Edwards team and to be honest with you that is exactly what Ogbeni is amazing at. He averages over six progressive carries per game and two successful take-ons. His ability to drag Luton up the pitch is honestly invaluable for the Luton setup and just to really emphasize how good Ogbeni is in terms of ball carrying he sits in the top six percent for progressive carrying distance in Europe's top five leagues. But you can't look over his defensive contributions because because any player, and I mean any player to play for Luton, has to offer maximum effort defensively as a very minimum. And I really do mean that. If we just quickly pull on the screen the squad that played against Crystal Palace, every single one of these players outside of that solid back three are all more than happy to do all of the dirty work. For example, Ogbeni sits in some of the highest percentiles for dribblers tackled, clearances, shots blocked, and touches in the defensive penalty box. And then if we even go and look at the other wing at Andros Townsend, he also has very, very solid defensive stats. That. Whether it be a 7 plus recoveries per 90 or the fact that he maintains an 87% tackle completion rate. Now though to move on to one of the best performers within his position in the whole of the Premier League. It's the new man. Thomas Kaminsky. No keeper in the whole of the Premier League has prevented more goals than the Hatters number 24. With him directly preventing over 5.5 goals in just 13 matches this season. On top of that, he also sits just outside the top 10% for saves made, whilst averaging a 68% save completion rate within that. And honestly, to put it quite simply, he is unbelievable. Kaminsky was one of the very best keepers in the championship last season and that form that he had with Blackburn Rovers last year has very much so continued in the Premier League. Although he is still yet to register a clean sheet, Luton Town would be so much worse off if they didn't have the Belgian between the sticks. To move on now from the players involved and more so to the man with the plan. The man orchestrating Mission Impossible. The man that is pulling the strings behind this unbelievable performance so far this season from a side that I've not spent anywhere near as much money as any other team. Rob Edwards. And, uh, are we really surprised that Watford unfairly sacked a very talented manager? <laughs> <laughs> now, do Luton play it pretty? No. But are Luton Town very effective? Certainly. Edward has his side sitting first for open play crosses, sixth for most clearances, 13th for most touches in the opposition's penalty box, and 10th for big chance conversion rate in the Premier League. And I just think that some of them statistics I previously mentioned, you know, some of the most crucial in terms of a footballing game, show just the kind of job that Rob Edwards is currently doing at Kenilworth Road. And speaking of Kenilworth Road, 
you can't mention Luton without looking at the good old Kenny. You know the place that many people presume would be the kind of reason that Luton stood somewhat of a chance of surviving what would be a very difficult season for them. But to be honest with you, it's not exactly the case. In fact, I believe Luton actually had a better away record than a home record in the championship last season. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but... I think that's kind of continued in the Premier League this season. Their first win in the Premier League came away at Goodison Park and they've only just got their first win at home. However, to be fair, there is no denying that the Kenny definitely does work its effects. We've seen them pick up points against the likes of Liverpool, uh, Wolves, sides that, you know, are probably better on paper. And he, there's no denying Kenilworth Road has its effect. When Luton are up against it and fighting for the points, it does almost get very toxic. I mean, the fact that the fans are so very close to the players, the fact that we've also got the stadium which kind of traps in the pitch, and on top of that, the 10,000 fans that fill out the Kenny every week are very often very vocal. <laughs> There's also kind of a feel-good factor at Luton. They got promoted for the first time to the Premier League. The fans are so happy to be there. The journey they've been on has been magical already. And it seems to only get more magical as the days go by. And I think the fact that a lot of teams pin them to, you know, break Derby's points record really does kind of boosts them somewhat. It feels like they're kind of riding that and pushing past it. They're using it to fuel them. There's a four-point gap separating them at 18th right now. So, could they get away from it all? Let me know down in the comments. If you have enjoyed this video, though, then please do leave a like and subscribe. We talk everything football here at the Jacob Horsfall channel uh, as much as I do I have a suffering addiction at the Burnley Football Club. But that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.